Hey coders, happy Monday. Chris here. First of all, I want to thank you guys for all of your well wishes and heartfelt comments in response to the quick video that I posted on Friday. It was really heartwarming for my family and I to read all of your comments and warm wishes. And I'm happy to say that my wife is doing a lot better. She started taking antibiotics and she's getting over her flu. So over the weekend, I was trying to figure out what to cover next. And from that video where I asked you guys for feedback, about 30% of you guys wanted to see some sprite kit stuff and building simple games. I'm not quite ready to do that yet because I consider myself to be a sprite kit beginner, but I am very interested in building games and creating games. That's what got me into programming in the first place. So I will do that for you guys at some point in the near future. Uh, but for now, the other thing that you guys requested is to look at Parse and build Swift apps with Parse. So for today and the next few videos, I want to cover uh, what Parse is and how to work with it and tutorials to save data, save images, save sounds and stuff like that. We're not specifically going to build an app, at least not immediately. Uh, I'm going to try and cover different features of Parse and how to use it. And then in the future, we will be well equipped to use Parse in our apps so we can build some more complex apps that save and retrieve data. And for those of you guys who aren't familiar with what it is, it's basically a backend service where you can store your data and your media and it exposes an API for you to retrieve that stuff back. Now, the nice thing about it is that you're basically getting database functionality without having to maintain your own servers and set up your own databases and stuff like that. And it also scales with you as you grow. So you don't have to manage all of that, uh, manage redundancy, scalability, and all that stuff. So Parse is free for the most part. Um, unless your app gets really, really popular and you need a lot of requests per second and you need a lot of storage space, uh, then you're going to have to start paying for it. But it's really nice because for the most part, when you're testing out ideas and you're building apps and you're not sure if it's going to work out, uh, you're getting a lot of functionality for free, essentially. And if you need to scale and you need to start paying for Parse, well, that probably implies that you are making money or you're going to be making a lot of money because the Parse free tier is so generous. So before we get into that, um, there's a couple of other features of Parse. I just want to go through if you're unfamiliar with it. So it just goes through trying to sell its service and stuff like that. But I wanted to tell you about what it can do aside from storing all of the media and data. It can also do push, push notifications, uh, and you get a million push notifications for free as well. I think that's per month or something like that. And now it has a new thing that's analytics and that's free as well. So you get all of that stuff for free. And I forgot to mention that it's also cross-platform because all of your data and your media is stored on their servers and it exposes an API for you to retrieve that stuff. Uh, it doesn't matter what your client is. It could be an iOS app, it could be an Android app, it could be a desktop app, it could be a website. And all of those platforms can hit the Parse backend to retrieve that data and that media. So you kind of have one backend system and you have all of these different clients or devices connecting to it. And the last thing I want to mention is if we go into the customers, there are actually a bunch of, there are actually a lot of big brands using Parse. So it's not something that was just set up yesterday or it's not, you know, some little startup. It's actually a pretty popular service now. So what I want you to do for this lesson is just sign up for a new account. So you can go to the sign up link right here. Uh, you can, you know, just fill in this stuff. And what you should get to is a dashboard like this. I haven't used it in a while, so I guess they've changed the dashboard and uh, let's try the new let's try the new dashboard so this is what you should get once you sign up as you can see i have been using parse for a while now and i can tell you it's really easy to use and it's great so over the next few videos i'll show you guys how to integrate parse into your xcode project and then how to start saving and retrieving data all right so thanks again for watching and thank you for your continued support and i'll see you guys tomorrow bye <music>